Welcome to my trip down memory lane on all the costumes I've made in the past seven years. We're starting off quick. This is a vintage Stetson that I found on eBay when I fell in love with the show Agent Carter. It's a little bit too small for me. Next up is pieces of my Hawkeye Ronin costume, which I'll do a full video on soon. There's a lot of pieces to this one and less things that made it to my wardrobe. Oof. Uh, and I need to learn how to look tough. And then these boots. I've used these in a couple of costumes. They were originally a brown, and I used them for a bell costume. But I then painted them this model tan color to better fit my bad wolf costume, and then I used them for Alana as well. These sparkly heels are for Cinderella, that'll come later. This is my Claudia vest. The costume is mostly a closet cosplay, but I don't really wear white in real life because I spill things, so this vest doesn't get wear in my closet, but I love it. It's lined with a neon green quilted cotton that is just... it fits with Claudia. This is... a bum pad, I guess? This is a capelet from a very short-lived Once Upon a Time Belle costume. And then these are parts of my Ariel costume, mostly from the latest update. As a base, the costume is a pair of blue collots, a blouse, and then the black corset, and then that big blue bow. But this past year I attempted a steampunk twist. Uh, I don't think I landed it, but the corset is breaking, so it's demanding that I retire the whole outfit. I will show you the full story of that outfit in a couple weeks. Oh, and then uh, these are my boxes of hair. My color red is not really standard, so they don't match very well, but sometimes they can be okay. And then there's the hoops. Oh boy, this costume bin is really disorganized. So when I have closet space, I tend to store my closet in bags upright. So that's what these clear garment bags are, um, but at the moment I only have one closet, so most of them are in the bin. Uh, these are from that Bad Wolf costume from Doctor Who that I mentioned earlier. It's getting its own video too. And then my Alana the Lioness costume from the Song of the Lioness books by Tamora Pierce, complete with a faithful on my shoulder. Uh, Faithful does like to flop a bit because he is a stuffed cat. This shirt is one of the many that I wore for a steampunk TARDIS over the years. Uh, this was a nylon lace that I put over the top of a rayon for coverage on the front and the back. And then my Kaylee costume. This was a really quick make, I guess, um, because I bought a children's extra large jumpsuit because I am that short. And I cut off the sleeves, and I added the patch, and a couple of marks on the costume itself. It's a little bit tight between the waist area and the shoulders, so I might have to add in some room up at the top there. So, this TARDIS costume is based off of the inside of Eleven's first TARDIS. Because the second one was a little too industrial for me, but the first one was beautiful with oranges and golds and like a nice teal aqua. It was great. So first is this corset, which was the first corset I ever made. We are not going to look very closely at it because it is terrible, but it's nice to keep around to see how far I've come. Then we have my leather corset belt with Gallifreyan symbols and the round things. I love the round things. Attached to that is what I call the television purse, because I was modeling it after the television. The belt has a vaguely Swiss waist kind of look, and I love it. Since this picture I've painted with some watered down acrylic and my favorite paint, Jacquard Lumiere, to spruce it up, and that's what you're seeing in the video.
So this is the combo apron and bustle, the latter of which had tapes on the back uh, with tack down bits of fabric to keep it nice and poofy and draped well. The apron part was draped with the pleats facing upwards to give it that like full and fluffy kind of shape. For the skirt, I alternated pleated panels with flat ones, and in between all of the panels, there were stripes of crepe top of the taffeta that the rest of the skirt was also made of, so it all had the same structure, even though the crepe was very uh, flimsy. Oh, and I love my pleated hem. It fluffed so nicely when I walked. It just went swoosh, swoosh. Okay, so we've come to the cape. It's very excellent for keeping me warm in a chilly air-conditioned hotel hall. It, it's, it's the TARDIS. It attaches to a vest that has some wibbly wobbly shapes on it that I was lucky enough to find in a thrift store. And I've got pearl strands on the arms of that. Okay, and finally for this costume, we've got the very blue petticoat. Uh, it is very polyester, but it kept my skirt hanging nicely without having to make a cage. This is my Susan costume, Susan Pevensey, from the, uh, this one's from Prince Caspian. It was the first costume that I took really seriously, and while it didn't really fit even when I did wear it, to a con at least, it fit when I initially made it, I am going to keep it for as long as I can. It's made from a poly crepe back satin that I hand painted with fabric paint, and I also had self-drafted the pattern. It does get worn over a corset and petticoat without a shift because that was before I knew. I would do the entire costume a lot differently now, but that's something that I've learned in the past four years or so. It's also got a full-length pleated petticoat, and uh, full-length pleated petticoats get unpleated in the wash, so those, those ironed-down pleats are the worst. Alright, and then we have this behemoth. Everything in this one bag is the same costume. This is my Cinderella costume, which has been in progress since 2016. It's still in progress now. Um, so here is the bodice. It was the last part that I worked on back in 2018 when I last had bandwidth for this project. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back in and put some boning in the bodice because it is a little bit wrinkly, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. There are so many layers in this bodice between the tool and the iridescent and then the base layer, but it has nothing on the skirts and supports. I mean, look at this mess. The order for the skirt goes hoops, and then petticoats, and then skirt layers. So there's two petticoats, one with the violet fabric and the turquoise tool just to get it, the puff really going, and then there's the iridescent one that has a hem ruffle to make sure that the hem does not get kicked back towards the hoop. The skirts are made of six full circle skirts made out of aqua and baby blue tool. There's still a couple things to finish up on this costume, uh, not the least of which is the wig. I hate wigs. Um, add wig styling to the list of something that might qualify as a hobby soon, because even though I hate them, sometimes they're necessary to make the character really come to life. Okay, and that's my collection so far. 
I've done a couple of closet cosplays, and there's a couple of parts of these cosplays that are actually in my closet, and so I didn't have them inside of this bin. But I hope you enjoyed my tour so far. In the next couple weeks, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be doing some more in-depth looks at some of the costumes that still fit me and that are still in my repertoire. But I've decided to retire and hopefully repurpose the fabric in my costume for the TARDIS because it, it doesn't fit and it barely fit in the last time that I wore it in, I guess that was 2018, maybe 2017. I'm going to do my best to reuse the materials because they're all colors that I do love and hopefully I can use them effectively in future projects, whether they're costumes or in some like home decor kind of projects. I managed to salvage a good amount of the fabric and some excellent trim, and hopefully I need a lot of well-pleated gold taffeta. And with that, I'm out. Look forward to some costumey chats in the next couple weeks. Bye!